my motherland is Papua New Guinea. And I am born here and I am in Papua New Guinea. And so is my people, Kurendu people. We don't come from any other place. We born here and we are still Kurendu people. The McLuha McClay Foundation presents a documentary, Asel Tui, Tui's Descendant. Almost a century and a half ago, it wasn't just two ordinary men who met on the northeast coast of New Guinea. It was like two epochs meeting, two different worlds, European civilization and people of the Stone Age. Russian scientist Nikolai Nikolaevich Mikluha Maklai met a Papuan called Tui, a local resident who became his friend and guide to that world of the Stone Age. In the new 21st century, Mikluha Maklai returned to Tui. Descendant to descendant. Each of them keeps not only the name of his ancestor. The main thing remained, the interest in each other, the desire to communicate and make friends, to discuss the present and the future, and remember the past. But when Tui looked at Maklai, he thought, it must be ghost. Mm -hmm. And then he was wondering, can I spear him? But no, this man like me here, he has got a uh, nose, he has got eyes. He might be somebody else from anywhere else, I think he's here. So that's why he said, oh, I will not kill him, but I will try to have a friend with him. The chief descendant of Tui's descendants, Asel Tui, lives not far from Garagasi Point. From generation to generation, he and his family have kept the stories of the friendship between the Papuan and the white man, as if he had descended from the moon onto this distant island. Maybe if you come this way, you come up from the moon because that is why you are Karam Tamar. I mean, Kurendu community has been since uh, Maklai came and we are still living in that situation. There is no change. Now Tui's family consists of about 50 people and almost all of them live in Gorendu village. Asel Tui's younger brother, Yaboy, also passes on the history of the village and their clan to the younger generation. Tui clan, we just came as a tribe. There are four tribes here in uh, Bongo, Gumbu. They came this way. Maybe we too, the Kurendu clan, came this way. Second, third, the Bongo clan. They were there, and then Ilek clan, they came. These four major clans that were here in Bongo, and they have their own language. Now this language is, we all mix up with these four tribes here. Nikolai Mikluha Maklai, a descendant and namesake of the Russian scientist, organized the first expedition in the contemporary history of Russia to Papua New Guinea in 2017. Back then, he met Asel Tui, the elder and the head of the family. Asel, thank you for inviting me to your village. I'm very grateful that you are ready to show us everything here. Uh, I am now with my people here at uh, Kurenduk village. Now I am going to go around with Sinemaklai and show him my village here. 
Okay, we are going now. It is raining, but I am going to walk with you. This is a uh, houseman bojo, where people come and sit down, make the fire, chew the betel nut, and they sit down here and they discuss the problems of the Korenduk uh, village. When there is a feast, we make the fire and cook the you go hunting and you kill the pig, these are the things that we use. This house here is built this way. You can see the roof is not high, roof is low, because this is too windy all the time. Those to avoid wind from blowing the whole thing down, they built the house this way. Here is my bed. I am sleeping here. And my books are here. All these things here. There is my wife's uh, bed. Asel Dui's house is not particularly different from other local houses. The same pilings, densely intertwined stems of bamboo protect from rain and wind. Asel admits that he dreams of building a better house one day. Here is my uh, chicken yeah. and they are laying eggs and I protect them. If I, if I let them and then they, they will be stolen by snake. <laughs> so I have to protect. These buildings are very similar to some of the drawings of Nikolai Miklucha Maklai. It takes only a glance to understand that Gorindu villagers still adhere to the traditional way of life. The same huts can be seen in the neighbouring villages. The scientist and traveller named this area the Maclay Coast by the right of the first European who settled here and explored this coast. Asil Dui founded the village and also gave it a name of the Russian scientist. I uh, choose that spot there as Maklai village because my parents told me to come here and stay here and look after the uh, monument there. Back in 1970, Soviet sailors constructed a memorial at Garagasi Point, the place where Nikolai Miklucha Maklai had landed on September the 20th, 1871. I, when I was teaching and I was in the village, the uh, Russians came over the, I think, uh, Vityas, brought the first group. They came. And then the second group came. That makes me thinking now. There must be a good thing up there on the point there, Karagasi point. Why somebody must be there and then clean it up? We may be having plenty will come later, a little later. So I came here. I was interested in. And I have been uh, in uh, school. I have been hearing so many things. So I have been reading diaries about it and I want to prove that I, mu I must clean that one. So one day I will, my dream will come through and I will have the Russians who come here. The Maclay Coast. As the great traveler wrote in his famous diaries, there is always a silence pleasant for me. Almost no sound of human talk, argument, abuse, only the sea, wind and sometimes some bird disturbs the common calm. Asel Tui no longer teaches, but as an elder, he cares about the education of the younger generation. In the Maklai village, he opened a primary school and gave it a name of the Russian traveler and ethnographer. Yeah, this is, this has been built and uh, this is the blackboard where uh, teacher write something and then the children they 
sit down on the floor here. The young children, like this, they don't sit on the bench or desks. They sit on the floor and then they write. Here is the uh, table that, that they use chalk and they write. 30 children in this, in this and then 30 on the other side. Hello Russia! On the northeastern coast of Papua New Guinea, the word Russia bears a special meaning. Local school children welcome the country where their friend Maclay once came from. And now, here are the Russian guests. A scientific expedition led by the descendant Miklucha Maklai. The scientists notice even the smallest changes that have come from civilization. Mobile phones, guitars, there were no string instruments in the time of Maclay Senior. Well, what are we going to do now without skills in English language? Thank you everyone for watching. Um, I'm the class teacher of Primary School and I'm taking a for coming today. English is the main language at the local schools. At the same time, Papua New Guinea is the most multilingual country on earth. There are more than 800 local languages and dialects. So, what language should be used for teaching? The local language is spoken at home and among themselves in informal situations. At school, they are taught in English now, because English is the language of education in Papua New Guinea. And all universities and colleges use only English. Young New Guineans are getting used to Russian. They learn new words, especially since the words Maklai, Axe, Corn have been remembered here for 150 years. Why not my people go there and visit Russia? And that's where I only learn in, uh, in the school. And uh, right now, I am dreaming to go there, but I'm getting old. If I am getting old and my children get there, I think I will be appreciated. What is Russia like? Or Maklai's village, as Tui called it a century and a half ago. As his ancestor then, Asel Tui would also like to discover that unknown country. These are the things that we are, or the life in the village, the system of housing, and the system of looking your uh, place of sleeping and enjoying yourself, whether you are sleeping uh, freely because of not afraid of mosquitoes like here, we are saving you with the mosquito net. All these little things are interesting. Assel says that malaria is quite a common disease in the region. The main way to defeat it is through prevention and urgent treatment. Malaria has been, um, is, is not, uh, is existing still in Papua New Guinea. And uh, we sort of get used to it, so we are not that afraid. They of the born children, we use the uh, tablet. They used to get injections where they can stop getting the malaria in the early stage. There is no local hospital in Gorendu village. If the disease is non-life-threatening, New Guineans do not go to Madang for this reason. They take medicine or, as in the old days, herbs. They also bear children here. We have our, our uh, normally the, the old mothers, they take care of that part of the area of life of woman who is giving birth to a child. Men, they have no right to enter, but that is the work of the woman, especially the old woman. 
they are experienced in doing this, so they go. Then they do all the service and help the younger women who are giving birth to her children. When Asel Dui was a child, he was afraid to go out at midnight. Sometimes the sounds of night birds frightened him. He admits that it is still scary. Quite opposite situation with demons, Asel Dui adopted Christianity. He goes to church and reads the Bible. He says it's his amulet. What I believe, I believe uh, on the wood of Christianity. And then, because uh, from the beginning, when I went to school, my father told me I must uh, stay in the village and then get all the uh, power that he has. And I told him, I will not stay with you uh, so long, so I have to leave you and I will go and go to school. Before church, I believe my culture. Another people, they still believe uh, culture. Culture meaning uh, initiation system program and uh, Sing Sing program. They believe in this one. So when they go with Sing Sing, Kundu, they do all sorts of things so that, you know, they believe that if they do this, they will have uh, something coming out of their dancing. Asel Tui shows a sacred place for Papuans, men's house. In December, boys undergo the initiation ritual, initiation into manhood. Before I become men, I must go through the initiation. Through initiation, they will teach me how to be a man and then how to be a man so that I can go fishing and then I can go hunting. All this I learn it from the initiation. And that's why we men have to go in, in the initiation ceremony. Now we say on this spot here, this place here, it is forbidden for the women to come. Assel does not reveal the secrets of the ritual. Even centuries later, in the restless 21st century, this ancient process of initiation into man in this land remains a mystery. The residents of the Maklai coast usually don't celebrate their birthday. But the moment when a young man returns home after the initiation turns into a real festival for everyone. New Guineans meet their dear guest Nikolai Miklucha Maklai Jr. dancing in national costumes. Their traditional jewelry and outfits are all natural. Animal fangs, seashells, feathers, dried flowers and fruits of the local trees. Over the past centuries, the villagers got used to doing everything together, being happy and worrying about loss. When someone dies, we have to come and sit and build sorrow with this family. In the night, we sit down together, we cry, mourn, and all these things, till the daybreak, and then we will put this dead body into the into coffin, and then we buried him. After the after buried him, we come and we continue mourn till a couple of days, and then we will make a big feast, and then we go out. Asel Tui is a loving husband and father. And many years ago, a young girl, Anu Kasek, was the first to pay attention to Asel. Since it began when I uh, started to come and teach, she was also a, a student on the same school that I went. 
I went as a teacher and she was a student. She met me and she made her mind to be my wife. And she wrote a letter and gave it to me and I didn't ex accept it but I went to uh, the chief of the island and told him, can I do that? Can I have this daughter, your daughter? And he, he said yes. And then I married her. We still so I love, still like that. We, we love each other yet. Uh, because we don't, we don't get cross and we don't fight. It's very look good. So this way we are also teaching our children that they, when they marry, married, they must look at us as a, their model, role model. Now we're going to see a pig. This is a pig that lives here in the household. Not the one that gets hunted. Is this Asel's pig? Yes. And how many pigs in, in the village? One only. Only one pig in the village. This is Gorendo village. And this part of it has already been called Maklai village. Now Asel's wife is showing us the pig. What is his name? Walpatun. Walpatun? Yeah. We have a lovely pig, Walpatun. Walpatun, 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 Walpatun. Most of the Maclai Coast residents are engaged in agriculture. During the expedition, the scientists were convinced that almost the entire diet of the New Guineans has been preserved for centuries. The most important plant, or root vegetable, is the yam. It has been grown here since ancient times. In addition, taro, bananas, sweet potatoes, and some other plants are grown in the gardens. But yams, taro and sweet potatoes are the main ingredients of their diet. People are living mainly they are all subsistence farmers. Meaning they are planting their own garden, they are building their own house with the bush, bush material. So that's a living that maybe Senior Macle wanted them to. The main thing Asel Tui is concerned about, young people are increasingly eager to leave for the city. Many of uh, Bongo people, boys and um, Bongo people, when they got their education, they leave the village and they go out and they would never come back again. They, uh, they finish from the education and then they look for a job and they go to town. And there is nobody here to develop the, our community. Asel Tui does not try to hinder the influence of civilization. He only wants to preserve the traditions of his native people. How much does it take to be happy? What makes me happy? If you so humble, your humbleness will make me happy. If you show your, if you show your kindness, I will be happy. The Russian scientist and traveler has returned here to the Maclai coast more than once. Once you are here, you understand why. This is a mysterious, alluring land where time passes in a unique way. And even though it's time, one doesn't want to go back to the rhythm of civilization. Thank you. Thank you. In Russian, it's Spasiba. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Go in peace. And nothing will happen to you in the day. You fly from the day you go. There is nothing will happen in the airplane. You must be to try to where you go, your trip will be very nice. No accident. And this is very nice.
the Russian scientist Nikolai Mikluka Maklai, as for Tui, this coast has become the coast of life. One by one, the waves roll in, as if symbolizing the movement of time and changeability, but at the same time, preserving the very essence.